Hello and welcome to this Plus Add-ons tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Unfold widget. This allows you to expand and collapse sections of your website, as you can see behind me. And this adds a lot of cool interaction and better user experience for your website visitors. I'm going to show you how to do it all, starting from scratch. I am Jack with Jack in the Net, bringing you this guest tutorial on behalf of the Plus Add-ons for Elementor. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming tutorials. Now, let's dive in. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that you have the Unfold widget enabled. So from the Plus settings, come on over to the Plus widgets. Use the search box to simply find it, type in Unfold, and make sure that you have it enabled. If you don't, turn it on, click Save, then come on over to Performance and clear the cache. Make sure to do the same thing for any third-party caching plugins you also have. Once you've done that, it's time to get editing. So on your web page, search for the Unfold widget within your Elemental search bar, drag it on into the page, and by default, it's gonna bring this up for you. Straight away, we can see that we can click this and it will expand, click it again, and it collapses. Over here on the left, you can name your title, which is what's up here. So this is our title. Then you can choose what type of content you're wanting to display. So at the moment, we have it on custom content. You can write in here what you want it to say, and that is what is going to appear here for you. Alternatively, you can switch this over to a template. So you can create templates within Elementor. All that you've made will be displayed here. So for example, if I choose this one that I made earlier, that now inserts that template inside our widget. We can now click on the Read More button and we can see this FAQ template that I made earlier. So just choose the option there that's best for you. Then you have your Expand button text. At the moment it says Read More. If we wanted, we could change this to say See More, and that edits it. You've got your icon position. You can have it either before or after the text. That'll move the icon for you. You can then choose your icon. You can delete it if you don't want one at all with a little trash can, or you can go in and change it to something else, like this. And you've also got a collapse button icon. So if we open this up, you'll see the icon has changed. We can change the text so that it now says see less. And we can change the icon as well. So let's go with a broomstick. You do also have the option for an extra button, which is a really nice feature. If we turn this on, we can change what we want it to say. So see all FAQs. You can put in the link that it's gonna take people to when they click the button, and then you can choose an icon for it. So when I expand this, you'll see the second one appears. It's got a nice floating in animation. You can change the icon for it as well. Let's just go with a briefcase for this one. So it's got that nice animation. Then you have content options. This allows you to choose whether you want your content to be above or below your buttons. At the moment, it is above. If we switch this over, you'll see that the content now goes below the button. Works in the same way, but the buttons are up here. Let's move it back to being above the button. And you can then change the maximum height of what is being displayed. So this is our preview. If we make this bigger, more of it becomes visible. Let's bring it back to around 150. You can add in some custom opacity. If I turn this on, it's currently white, but you'll see that that's expanding up and down the page. If we want, we can change the color, maybe make it sort of a lightish blue. And then you can change the opacity height to where you want. Let's have it a little bit low like that. That looks quite nice. And then you can change the duration of the animation. So at the moment, when I click this, it's opening quite quickly and closing quite quickly. That's because this is in milliseconds. If we change this over to 2000, for example, that's gonna become two seconds. That's gonna be a much slower animation. So that's how you can change this, looks really nice. Change your toggle alignment as well, so we can center it up, move it over to either side. And that is it for the content options. We now want to look at the styling. So first up, we have our title styling. We can change the margins on this if we want to, maybe around 10, change the alignment. I'll leave it on the left. And you've got all your normal typography settings. So we can change the size of this, can change the weight, bold it up, make it all capitals, all the normal element options that you have here. We can also change the text color. Maybe we'll have this one as a darkish blue. 
And then you have your description margins as well. So we can change these margins. That's going to move it across the page. I'll leave it where it was. And then you have the same thing for your toggle button styling. So we've got the margins. We can move this out a little bit. The padding will actually change the size of your button. So we can change the size of it like this. Again, I'll leave it by default. I think it looks good. You can alter your typography for the button as well. So we can make that bigger or smaller. Change the font family, that sort of thing. Then you have the text color. Now, bear in mind, we have normal and we also have a hover view. So at the moment, our text color is white. If I go over to hover, maybe we want that to become black. And the background, we can have a gradient or we can have a solid color. So let's have it as a light blue on the normal view. So back under the content section and content options, I put in this blue for our opacity color, didn't I? So let's take the same color blue, come back to style, go to our toggle button, and under the normal view, under background type, let's put that in as our background color. Maybe it's a little bit hard to see with the font being white, so we could change that. We could make it a little bit gray, or maybe a dark blue. That would look quite good. Yes, I like that. And then for the hover style, what we could do is we could change our background color over to a darker blue, but then, of course, we've got our text turning black because we did that up here under the hover section. You can also put in images as well. Just bear in mind, they're obviously going to be quite small inside of your buttons. You've then got your border type. So we could have a border. Maybe make this sort of a purple color. That'll appear there. Or we can just get rid of it if we don't want one at all. And we can then change the border radius. And this will curve up our button. So now it looks like this. Once you've done that, you have the toggle icon options. So this is going to change the size of our icon. You can also change the distance between the icon and the writing. That's what the offset does. And if you want to have your icon as a different color from the text, we can do that here. So let's change our normal icon color back to white and change the hover color over to red. And then it's going to look like that. Change it back to how it was. And then we have the toggle button wrapper. So if we change this, we can start moving the toggle button around the page. Obviously, you can unlink your margins if you want to. Then if I change this over on the left, it's going to move it independently of all the other ones. But I'll leave them linked together. And then below that, we have the extra button style. So obviously, when we open this up, we have our extra button. We can now style this up exactly the same way as we just did with the other button. You've got all the same options. You've got your typography, so we can change the sizing of it. You've got your text color and also your background type. So maybe this one we want as a gradient. Change this over to sort of a blue and a purple color. And change the locations of those gradients, change the angles on it. And that is under the normal section. And you've then got the hover color as well so that it can change if we want it to. Then just as before, we've got border types. If you want to have a border, you can put one in as I've already shown you. And we can also change our border radius and curve things up. So all the same options as before. We also have box shadow, so we can do that. Again, you can do that on both of them. The option is also up here under the toggle button as well got your box shadow so maybe we want to have shadow slightly below it a little bit blurry maybe make it a little bit lighter as well that looks quite nice i do like that and then you've also got the icon size options for your extra button over here so we can increase the size of it change the offset and also change the icon color as well just remember that once you've done this on your desktop view, you'll want to use the little icons to switch over to tablet, for example, so we can make sure that the sizing still looks right on there and then do the same thing for mobile. OK, you can do that for each and every part of this. So we can do it on the extra button. We can do it on the toggle button. You can do it for your description styling as well. OK, every single part of this is responsive thanks to the plus add ons. So just make sure to go into each of these different options and change the sizing so that it's going to look good on every single view. Once you've done that, you have designed your unfold widget, which looks really cool. And don't forget that if you come on over to the plus add ons own site, you can use the live copy cross browser paste feature to take any of their designs and import them into your own website. We have a separate video showing you how to do that.
And that is it for the Unfold widget. It's a powerful one, but a really simple one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the upcoming tutorials for all the other widgets that the Plus add-ons for Elementor has to offer. Thank you very much again for watching. Goodbye.